or where you may pay your rent or your mortgage or any website that holds or asks for your private information really always make sure it's using HTTPS I make it a habit to make sure every site I go to is using HTTPS I mean these days if you don't if there's a website that's not using HTTPS I'd be very suspicious about it before we begin this video I just want to say that transport layer security is a really tough concept to understand if you don't work directly in the network security domain it, it gets really tough that kind of goes just about for every other uh, CISP domain, doesn't it? I mean, I breezed right through the network security domain while studying for the CISP exam on my own because that's my job, a network security engineer. But the software development domain, completely foreign concept. I, I hated the software development domain to the point that I just didn't even want to study or read about it. I, I convinced myself that, you know what, the exam's probably not going to have a lot of software development security. I'm not going to study it that much. Guess what? It was majorly all software development security. Good thing I studied it as much as I could. Anyway, TLS is a tough concept, and there are a lot of terms we're going to be talking about that you should already be familiar with. TLS really can be a true test of your understanding and application of everything you studied in cryptography in real life and for the CISP exam. Just in case you wanted to check your knowledge, I'll identify some of the terms you should already kind of know and at least be familiar with and what functions they serve. So let's first go over the terms and concepts you already have to know, and then we'll follow that up by doing a brief history of TLS real quick. And then we'll get into the usage and the security provided by TLS. Okay, let's go to general TLS vocabulary. TLS uses a suite of cipher protocols which you will read all about in your studies, particularly in domain three, security engineering. After you've built a foundation of cryptographic vocabulary in Domain 3, then you move on to Domain 4 and learn about TLS, Transport Layer Security. So before even beginning to understand what TLS is about, you have to know about these terms and get familiar with their functions at a high level. Let's start with the first one, encryption. I mean, you gotta know encryption. That's a foundation concept. You have to know about encryption before reading or learning about anything else we're going to be talking about. You gotta know that is the process of changing plain text into ciphertext. And that's another term. You have to know what ciphertext is. For example, in this, in this uh, graphic, meet me at the library at 3 a.m., that's the plain text. It's an ordinary message that you want to send to someone. The graphic right below it in the middle is some sort of mathematical calculation, some sort of encryption algorithm that plain text has been run through. Once it runs through the algorithm, it becomes ciphertext, something that can't be read, something that can't be understood, and in no way resembles the plain text. So if I wanted to encrypt that message and send it over the internet, Anybody performing a man in the middle would just see the ciphertext. It would not make sense to them. It shows no resemblance to the original message. And that's it with cryptography, really. All you're trying to do is take the plain text and make it look as far away as possible from the original message and turn it into ciphertext. The next term is symmetric and asymmetric encryption. These are the different types of encryption. Encryption you have to know. There's no way around that. And then you have to know about the types of encryption. Real quick, symmetric encryption uses the same key to encrypt as it does to decrypt. And asymmetric encryption uses public and private keys to encrypt and decrypt. So not the same keys. Symmetric is faster but less secure and it's easier to set up. Asymmetric is more secure but just a little bit slower and a bit more complicated to set up. If we look at the graphic here for symmetric encryption, we take that plain text message we run it through an encryption algorithm and we use the secret key or the symmetric key, the same key of CISSP, run it through the algorithm and then we get the ciphertext. I send the ciphertext over to the receiver and I say, hey, use uh, the same algorithm that I did, say for example AES-128, and make sure to use this secret key, which is CISSP, in order to decrypt it. And the receiver, if he runs it through AES-128, uses the secret key CISSP, he will be able to decrypt that message and read it. He'll be able to meet me at the library at 3 a.m. So the same key is used by the sender and the receiver. In asymmetric encryption, it's different. The message can be encrypted. Well, that's not right. Message encrypted with private key. I guess you can do that. That's a mistake on my part. What we need to say is that the message is usually encrypted with the public key of the receiver. The message is encrypted with the public key of the receiver sent over to the receiver who then decrypts it with their private key. Sorry about that mistake. That's asymmetric encryption. Two different keys 
are used for encryption. Not the same thing. Not CISSP. Two different keys. A public and a private key. You first encrypt the message with the receiver's public key and when the receiver receives it he decrypts it with his private key he never shares his private key with anyone because the private key can decrypt the messages that's encrypted with his public key he can share the public key all he wants he or she sorry he or she can can send the public key to anybody they want they can use it to encrypt a message and when they receive it the receiver only the private key can decrypt the message i don't want to get too much into it because this is a tls video but uh, we'll go over it in some other video the next term is the word keys itself. Keys. Speaking of public and private and symmetric keys, you gotta know the word keys. It's like keys to a door. Only a certain one can open it. Same thing with cryptography. Our symmetric key in the previous term was CISSP, and our asymmetric keys were encrypted with the public key and decrypted with the private key. Keys are an important thing. That's what an attacker is trying to figure out. The key to the secret. The key to the encryption algorithm. Encryption techniques, yeah, these look intimidating, but you got to know them. You got to know about things like block ciphers, stream ciphers, padding, initialization vectors, exclusive or, all that. You got to know it. It's too in-depth for me to go into right now, so I just want to breeze through it and show you this is kind of these terms and vocabulary build a basis for your cryptography knowledge. You have to know about block ciphers, you have to know about electronic code book or ECB, and you absolutely have to know about cipher block chaining and how that works. You have to know about cipher feedback, output feedback, and counter mode. These are symmetric uh, encryption things, block ciphers. Along with block ciphers, you have to know about stream ciphers. The good news, I'll tell you a secret about stream ciphers in the CSP exam, you probably only have to know one, which is RC4. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. And the last thing I wanted to mention, there's a lot more things you have to know, but these are some of the critical ones in my opinion. The last thing you have to know is that MAC and HMAC. MAC and HMAC are forms of hashing. Um, MAC stands for message authentication code. And let's just say hashing itself is a one-way thing. It's not, remember, hashing is not encryption. It's completely different. If you want to make your hashing a little bit more secure, you can use a message authentication code, a MAC. And a form of MAC, uh, a function of MAC, is called a HMAC or a CBC-MAC. There's that CBC again, Cypher Block Chaining. It's everywhere. And CMAC. Okay, all that sound good? I mean, again, it's no problem to watch the rest of this video if you aren't familiar with these terms. It may even lay a foundation of what you need to review and what you don't. It may even tell you what you know and what you don't. Okay, let's move on to a brief history of TLS because that's what all... CISP study guys and CISP videos on YouTube talk about in TLS, don't they? They always provide a brief history for some reason. I don't know. It seems like they do. I, I'll just do one too. Why not? Brief history of TLS.